So now let's see what happens um, if we just had the formation constant. So let's focus on the formation constant reactions. And if we just had this one by itself. And um, let's see, so we have silver and ammonium ion. We're making this complex ion. Um, we want to find the amount of free silver ion. So if we look at this K, it's huge, which means it's going to go all the way to the right. Means we're going to make a lot of this we're not gonna have a lot of our reactants left over. So we're gonna try to find a really, really small number. We're gonna have to do this in a slightly different way than we usually do. We're gonna have to make two ice tables. And the, and the first one's not really an ice table. The first one we're just saying, what happens if we went all the way in the forward direction and we use up all of our, at least one of our reactants. It's like a limiting reactant kind of problem. And then we're gonna backtrack. So remember, if you have a big K, a, a big K in the forward direction, it's gonna be really small in the reverse direction. That's gonna be important for us later. So um, they say, okay, calculate the concentration of free silver ions. And we, we prepared the solution with the 0.1 molar silver nitrate. That's our source of, of silver ions. Don't worry about the nitrate. That's a strong electrolyte. It's going to dissociate into ions. So that's our source of silver ions. So I have 0.1 molar silver ions. I have a 3.0 molar ammonia. And I don't have any of those. Okay. Now, the first step, I'm going to assume I use up all the silver first and then I'm going to backtrack so why can I make that assumption because this K is huge I'm going to go all the way in the forward direction and then I'll backtrack so I'm going to use up all my silver I'm going to subtract out all that so I don't have any of that left over and here for every one mole of silver I use up two moles of the ammonia so I'm going to subtract two times the amount of ammonia that I have that gives me 2.8 so don't forget that too that's going to be important later on and over here, since I'm only making one mole of this, I just add 0.1. So minus, minus, add, um, minus 0.1, minus basically 0.2, and then I add 0.1 over here. So 0, 0 0.10. Great, that's my KF. I can write my KF expression too, that's easy, because since they're giving me that KF, I'm gonna write that for this reaction. Products over reactants, I have my silver, my NH3, over if you're looking at that at this point thinking wait there's no variable to solve for that's what's going to come in the next step so that's our first ice table the second one our final concentrations are are our initial concentrations in our second step and now i'm going to go in the reverse direction so i want to go in this direction um, I, I say I go all the way in the forward direction first and then i'm going to backtrack and go in the opposite direction so i'm going to subtract x here so I'm going in the opposite direction. And I'm going to add 2x. Why 2? Because of this 2. Don't forget that. And I'm going to add an x over here. And this is really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the free silver concentration, silver ion concentration. First step, I go all the way in the forward direction. I assume I use all of it up. Now I reach equilibrium, so I start backtracking a little bit. So that's really what I want to look for. 2.8 plus 2x and 0.10 minus x. Now I can take this bottom row and plug that into the equilibrium constant expression that I wrote above there. Um, so even though we're going in the reverse direction, um, as long as I have that equation and the Ka for that, it's the, the, sorry, the Kf for that, it's fine. I can just plug that in um, directly. Uh, so when I do that, I get uh, 1.7 times 10 to the positive 7 is 0 0.10 minus x over x times 2.8 plus 2x, um, that whole thing squared. Don't forget that square. That's going to be important too. So products over reactants. Um, this, is a, this is just a plus sign. It's not an, an exponent. This one is an exponent. Um, now this would be a lot easier <laughs> if I didn't have those stupid x's there. Um, and I know that since this is the x in the reverse direction, it's going to be really, really, really small. Because going in the forward direction, it was big. The kf is big. The reverse k has to be pretty small. So I can ignore this x and I can ignore that x the way we usually do. And now I can just solve for, um, now I can solve for this x. So the math gets a little tricky, so let's take our time here. So I have 1.7 times 10 to the 7, that's 0 0.10 over x times 2.8, that whole thing squared. Don't drop that square, <laughs> that's going to mess you up. 
Um, we wanted to solve for x, so I can multiply by x on both sides. Great. So I have 1.7 times 10 to the positive 7 times x is 0 0.10 over 2.8 squared. Now I can divide by the 1.7 times 10 to the 7. Over here, divide by 1.7 times 10 to the 7. And when I work all that out, I get x is really small, 7.5 times 10 to negative 10. That's x. Yep, and that is the silver ion concentration. And when it's small, which is what I expected it to be. So just to recap here, um, the first thing we did was we set up our you know, equilibrium constant expression. Uh, we said we have some silver, we're going to use up all our silver, uh, we make a little ice table, go all the way in the forward direction, then we want to backtrack and solve for our little bit of x. So that's how to do a problem with, they just give you the kf. Um, if you want to see what happens when you have, uh, when you combine a kf and a ksp, how do you do that kind of ice table problem, here we go. So in this one they want to know what's the molar solubility of silver bromide, so you're you know, basically looking for S in 3 molar um, ammonia. Alright, so that's our initial concentration, they give us 3 molar ammonia. We don't have to worry about this solid, the solid's not going to go in the equilibrium constant expression, we can, which we can write. We have our, again, this, this reaction just came from combining a KSP and a KF. So we have silver here times Br minus over NH3 squared. So I'm starting off here with a 3 molar. I don't have any of these other ones. Um, I'm going to use up some of this 2s because I have a 2 here. So keep track of your stoichiometry. Two. And here I have 3 minus 2s. And this is S and this is S. And we look at our KSP or our sorry, our KC, and we see this is in this is a normal, you know, if we could just do a regular one ice table for this guy, it's not crazy big. Um, so I can take all of these and plug it into our equilibrium constant expression. And so we end up with our KC, which is 8.0 times 10 to the negative 6 is s times s, it's just s squared, over 3.0 minus 2s, that whole thing squared. Then I can just take the square root of both sides. I can also ignore my s on the bottom, that will help. But that minus 2s because this is to the negative 6, so it's going to be pretty small. So I get 2.8 times 10 to the negative 3, that's when I take the square root of the 8 times 10 negative 6 is equal to s over 3.0. Just multiply by 3.0 on both sides. And I end up with s is equal to, and you get 8.4 times 10 to the negative 3, and that is your molar solubility. So there's one other um, factor that we can talk about that affects solubility. Some um, metal oxides and hydroxides are actually more soluble under acidic and basic conditions than they would be under uh, neutral conditions. So aluminum, zinc, tin, these sorts of things. They have other um, reactions that go on whether you're under acidic or basic conditions. So something like aluminum hydroxide here you can see. Um, under basic conditions, aluminum hydroxide will pick up another hydroxide and form this ion. Under acidic conditions, here you have your aluminum hydroxide. I'll write it out here. Plus 3 H pluses gives you aluminum 3 plus and 3 water. So both of these reactions um, will happen. <laughs> so they're different reactions, but um, the point is that some metal oxides and hydroxides are actually more soluble, they can be more soluble. You can increase the solubility by, by adding an, an acid or a base.